There were several times when the Buddha said that all he taught was suffering and the end of suffering. That time he was walking through the sinks of a forest, picked up a handful of leaves, and asked the monks, which is greater, the leaves in his hand or the leaves in the forest? And they said, of course, the leaves in the forest are greater. He said, in the same way, the things that he had known directly was awakening, were like the leaves in the forest, and the things he taught were the handful of leaves. And it was just four things, suffering, its origination, its cessation, the path to its cessation. So sometimes people hearing these passages ask, well, why did he talk about rebirth? Why did he talk about the many levels of the cosmos? Why did he talk about the history of the cosmos? Well, the two main reasons. One is he shows all the different ways in which we can suffer. Death was simply the end. There wouldn't be much we'd have to do. But it's not the end. As long as there's craving and clinging, the mind is going to keep on wanting to come back. And it can go back to all kinds of places. The moment when you leave the body, you're pretty desperate. You're being pushed out. It's like being evicted from a house. And so you look and see whatever is available in the market, and you go to whatever seems likely. And the range of likely things may not be all that wide or all that good. The other reason, though, is that you look at the Buddha's description of the many cycles of the, the cosmos, and they don't go anywhere. They evolve and then they devolve, and then they evolve again and devolve again. It becomes pretty obvious this is a universe without a purpose. Now, a lot of people find that thought chilling, but it's directly related to the issue of suffering. If this universe had a purpose and your suffering was part of the purpose of the universe, there'd be no way out. You'd have to continue suffering. But here, there's no purpose. And so you're free. If you want to put it into suffering, and the Buddha has found the way, there's nobody to say no. Now this means no more rebirth. But again, look at what the options are. I was talking with an artist one time, and she was saying that she knew that someday her art was going to be destroyed. Of course, everything was going to blow up when the sun went nova. But she said, well, maybe I've rearranged a few atoms and it'll be a little bit different in the nova, which seems a pretty depressing thought. If you look outside in the world for your meaning, it's doing everything it can to say no, no, no. And you look at the various levels of rebirth. We live in a world where people f feed on other beings, and other beings feed on other beings. And you wonder what kind of purpose that serves. You look at nature documentaries. I saw one a while back, these huge bats in Australia have no way of drinking water except for getting the fur of their chest wet. And so every day they have to go down to a river and skim across the river to get the fur of their chest wet, and then they go back, sit on a branch, and lick off the water. The problem is the, the river is full of crocodiles. And so every day, just to get a drink of water, the bats have to risk death. And you see their efforts to get away from the crocodiles. It's, it's pretty dismaying. And you look at stars and planets forming and then blowing up. Where are you going to go to find any meaning or purpose in this? 
There's nothing there. What kind of accomplishments do you want to make? The things you work on can easily get snuffed out. Which is why it makes all the sense in the world to look inside, work on your own mind. Why is it the mind wants to keep coming back? And if this were all there were, we'd say, well, just put up with it. But the Buddha says there's more, there's better, there's an, there's an escape, and it's the highest possible happiness. Because it's outside of space, outside of time, and it's not touched by the evolution and devolution of the cosmos. It's totally free. So all the various purposes that you could make for your life, and that's the whole point, is you can decide for your own purpose. You can decide your own meaning. That would be the best. That is simply a question of developing the qualities of mind that are needed to get there. That's what the perfections are all about. If you look at the accomplishments of your life in terms of the mark that you've left behind. Are there all too many things out there that are willing to erase that mark? But the qualities you build into your mind, nobody else can take those away. Someone once asked a John Munn if your virtue was somehow separate from your mind. He said, how could it be? Your virtue is in your intentions, and your intentions are definitely part of your own mind. And if it could be separated from your mind, people would do just that. They come in and steal your virtues. But because they can't be separated, there's no way you can be stolen. You're the only one who can destroy your virtue. Why would you want to do that? So think about the qualities you wanted to build in life. The perfections give you a list. There's generosity, virtue, renunciation, discernment, persistence, endurance, Truth, determination, goodwill, equanimity. These are the qualities that the tradition has said lead to awakening. It's, it's not a list you'll find in anything attributed to the Buddha directly. It comes from the Jataka tales, which were later compilations. But they're all qualities that the Buddha himself, at one point or another, would recommend. And it's a good list to measure yourself against. Which one of those are you lacking in? Persistence, endurance, those are the ones we tend to be weak in. But they all come under determination. In other words, you realize that your mind has lots of random desires, and some of them pull in a direction you want to go, and others pull in another direction that another part of you wants to go. But all too often, the decision is simply made on the, the basis of urges, thoughts that come into the mind and then go. And you want to sit down and think about it. Where do you really want to go? What do you really want to accomplish inside? And then make up your mind that that's going to be your overriding resolve. It's a promise you make to yourself, and then you want to stick with it, make sure that other desires that go against it don't have any force against it, don't override it. But it is your choice. That's the important thing. So take some time to think. What would you like to accomplish in this lifetime? Specifically, what would you like to accomplish in the training of the mind, understanding the mind? One of the reasons we meditate is because we don't really understand our minds. We need to look at them to see how it is and how they process things coming in through the senses, and they can process them in a way based on ignorance that's going to lead to suffering. If you decide to take the Buddha's path, 
Okay, you start out with conviction in the Four Noble Truths, and you try to apply that. And that turns them into a path. And the path really comes together when it leads to something that is beyond. You have your first taste that really is true, what the Buddha said. There is this dimension outside of space, outside of time, and it really is the highest happiness. That's something the mind can do. So think about how you live your life in relationship to that fact, or relationship to for what you at the moment is just a possibility. But it is a possibility. Don't listen to the people who say that it's impossible, because what do they know? They've never tried. But remember, the purpose of your life is something you, you decide. So before you make your determination on what your purpose is going to be, give it a lot of thought. And if you're not sure, well, say, tell yourself, I want to understand my mind first. That's a good start. Understand how it creates suffering, how it, understand how it can go about not creating suffering. That's a good purpose to try out, because as the Buddha said, with that kind of intention you can go all the way, which is why he taught just that handful of leaves. <laughs>